This is an off-the-shelf video on a Call to Arms Starfleet. Designed by Matthew Sprang and published by Mongoose Publishing. I uh, will first take a look at the rulebook. Um, full hardcover, uh, shiny, glossy cover. Um, so cover only has uh, the publisher, designer, um, Title called Arm Starfleet and a battle <clears throat> picture of ships. Yeah, I'm not that knowledgeable about the whole Starfleet universe. Um, on the back, uh, a call to arm Starfleet is a game of space combat in the Starfleet universe. Throughout humanity's space age history, the Federation has come under pressure from many enemies. Now you can play out these confrontations on the tabletop with entire fleets drawn from the Federation, Klingon Empire, Romulan Empire, or any one of the many other fleets that range across the galaxy. From skirmishes involving lone destroyers to the clashing of large fleets against their bitterest rivals, a call to arms Starfleet is your ticket to exciting battles that take place in the depth of space. So let's take a look at uh, the rule book in general. First chapter introduction uh, includes what you will need, scale and miniatures, uh, rerolls pre-measuring, and then movement and firing. We have all of the um, firing arcs from four to turret. And then we have uh, kind of a, well, yeah, a overview of the ship, um, what do they call them, a ship roster roster sheet. I think that's a roster sheet anyways. Um, but what it does have is uh, Constitution class heavy cruiser uh, points value. Um, it has a very short um, couple sentences about what type of ship class it is. Uh, ships of the class and I guess these are names, 1700 Constitution, 1701 Enterprise, 1703 Farragut, etc. So these must be hull numbers and names, I'm guessing. A turn value, in a six in this case, damage, uh, in this case 32 um, slash 11. Craft, four shuttles, shields 24, marines five, traits. Labs eight, tractor beam two, transporter three, and then it has a list of its weapon systems with range, arc, AD, what is AD? Attack dice, okay, attack dice, and special uh, special characteristics, I guess, of those uh, weapon systems. And then down here, it looks like you have little variants, I guess, command cruiser, CC variant, and again, hull number and names, example, 1703 Lexington, 1705 Excalibur, plus 25 points, and then I guess if you get the command cruiser, you change the AH or aft half phaser one to turret arc. Um, add command plus one trait. Next chapter is the turn, just one page. It's initiative phase, movement, attack, end phase. And in general, what are we looking at? Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything uh, especially unusual here. So, the initiative phase used to resolve any actions that do not require players to make any choices, such as compulsory movement of ships, and to decide who will have the initiative for the turn. Um, movement phase player who lost the initiative phase by rolling lower than his opponent will now move a ship first. Players alternate moving each of their ships. Then we have attack phase. Once ships have been moved into position, they are allowed to fire their weapons in an effort to destroy their enemies. Players then alternate the firing of their ships. The player who won the initiative nominates one of his ships and then, and then players alternate. And then end phase. All right. Now, what is this down here, this little, I guess, kind of like a call-out box, Captain Fillet Cosnet? I hope I don't offend any Star Trek uh, devotees with my lack of 
knowledge here, background knowledge here. A massive meteor was spotted heading for the industrial colony of Pollux 9, and the heavy cruiser Congo was dispatched under the command of Captain Philip Cosnet. Uh, approaching the meteor, Cosnet discovered it was being shepherded by a Klingon frigate. In the greatest traditions of Starfleet, Cosnet managed to tow the meteor off its collision course while limiting damage to the Klingon frigate little more than reduced shields. With the threat of a powerful uh, photon salvo awaiting him, the Klingon captain broke off the engagement and returned to the Klingon border. Um, hmm. Okay. The movement phase includes stationary ships reversing, which is interesting. Looks like you can go straight back up to four inches without turning at all. Uh, lowering shields. Another one of these call-out boxes, a measure of fear. I'm not exactly sure what these call-out boxes are, but it seems like that would be the nice, the one I read before about Philip Cosnet. Seems like that would be a good setting for a scenario, although maybe that's what it's meant to be, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then the second page of the movement chapter is basic full-page diagram. Constitution class heavy cruiser has a turn score of six. All measurements in this game are done with inches. So it must move at least six inches in a straight line before it can turn. This done, it turns up and all turns in the game are up to 45 degrees. So this done, it turns up to 45 degrees. It must move another six inches in a straight line before it can turn again. Once another six inches has been covered, a second turn can be made. Now, Right off, right off the bat, does that mean that you have to record the pivot point from turn to turn, or in order to track it from turn to turn? Hmm. All right, that's movement. Very, 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 very basic. So the attack phase discusses eligible targets, the actual attacking. So how do you attack in this game? Uh, each weapon system listed on the ship's roster has an attack dice AD score listed. This is the number of dice rolled. Six-sided dice, I assume. Uh, yeah, six-sided dice. This is the number of dice rolled every turn, or every time the weapon system is fired. Each weapon system may only fire at one target at a time. It may not split up attack dice between different targets. A roll of four or more on each attack dice die is a hit. If a weapon system is firing at a target at greater than half its range, each attack die will suffer minus one penalty due to the great distance. Now, I don't want to get into a deep, a deep uh, critique of this, these game uh, game rules. Not now, I doubt ever. But right off the bat, I'm wondering, okay, why in a space combat game are there long range penalties? But anyways, uh, is that supposed to represent? Uh, difficulty of acquiring a target at long range, but frankly, with everything digital, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, shields, damaging enemy ships with a basic attack table here on a one die six. So, so basically, you roll for hits. For every hit, you're going to roll on the attack table. It looks like one is a bulkhead hit. Oh, no damage dealt. 2 to 5 is a solid hit, minus 1 damage to target ship, which again, I'm assuming is reference to that damage rating on the ship roster, like 32 slash 11. Up here under the damage paragraph, it tells you that when you hit, when you get down to 11, um, uh, I guess, <clears throat> I don't know, hull points or something, um, the ship is crippled. Okay. All right. So crippled. Okay. Crippled ships. Running adrift. The second page of the attack phase chapter. Stricken ships. Critical hits. Escalation. Uh, weapon systems in Starfleet. Oh, okay. Starfleet. Um, okay. And disruptors. And then here we have a full page of, I guess these are types of critical hits, okay. So you roll for critical hits here, and then I guess these are further, okay, critical score, impulse drive, dilithium chamber, ooh, that sounds so science fiction-y. Weapons, crew, and shields. And then for the attack chapter, 
Okay, one more. Uh, drones, phasers. By the way, how do they handle dr their drones? These are unmanned, self-propelled, and guided delivery vehicles carrying a thermonuclear warhead. That sounds dangerous. In other words, a missile. Drones are used by the Klingons, the Federation in limited number, and the Kazintis extensively. Phasers, photon torpedoes, plasma torpedoes. Okay, keeping records. Okay. All right. Definitely take a second look at that in a bit. And then plasma torpedo types, I guess. Then we have the end phase, damage control, compulsory movement check for escalation. And okay, so that's that chapter. Then we have special actions. And they're, well, first some general attacks, performing, crew quality checks, power drain. These are general, general rules, details, which apply to the special actions. Oh, critical hits. So let's do all power to engines as an example. Got crew quality check, automatic. Power drain, yes. So we go back to the power drain rule there. Effect, diverting all power away from side and station keeping thrusters. The captain orders his crew to make best speed. The ship may move up to 16 inches for this turn. This special action may not be selected if the impulse drive or dilithium chamber have critical scores. All right, and then we have more boost energy, energy to shields, etc. Um, so special actions. Okay, so two pages of special actions. So then we have special traits. We have um, traits for ships and tra traits for weapons. Um, so we have different like agile, anti-drone, and then some value, command plus some value, immobile, labs, uh, lumbering, scout, etc. Special weapons. We have one dealing with accuracy. We have devastating, multi-hit, precise, etc. So that right there, the first 15 pages of the rule book are the, the basic rules. Um, enough to get going with moving and firing and enough to get going for your, basically your, your flavor or chrome. Well, are they, is it chrome? I don't know. I don't know, but the, the little flavor type rules, um, special actions and special traits. That's it, 15 pages. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, as a matter of fact, my only question will be, is it so basic, so straightforward that maybe, maybe there are some, some gaps Maybe not though, maybe it's all very, very straightforward. So then we have advanced rules. We've got cloaks, crew quality, uh, the defense of fire against drones, against plasma torpedoes, using drones against drones, tactical use of phasers. Uh, oh, okay, that's a call out box. Okay, uh, evading, seeking weapons, labs, probes, multiplayer games, plasma fire modes, plasma bolts, Plasma Carinade. Um, splitting Fire Squadrons. Uh, tactical Withdrawals, tr Tractor Beams. Um, transporters and Turn Sequence. So what's... As you begin to add more advanced rules to your games, you may find that the following turn sequence, sequence is easier to follow. Ships moving and fighting do so in the order shown here. So now movement is broken down into declare special actions. Ships moved, shuttles moved. Attack phase, attacks, defensive fire against seeking weapons. Roll attack dice, stealth. Use shields, roll on attack table, critical hits, close blast doors, rolls. End phase, compulsory movement, damage control performed, escalate damage. Chapter on shuttlecraft. Chapter on stellar debris, including asteroid fields, dust clouds, comets, uh, planets. And then we have general scenarios. We have an ambush scenario. We have annihilation scenario, assassination scenario, 
um, Call to Arms, Explore a Strange New World. Um, Recon Run, Rescue, Space Superiority, Towering Inferno. Actually, so we come in peace, so shoot to kill. So actually quite a, a number of base or kind of template, well, what are they called in general scenarios? Um, and then you have Tactical Challenges. Tactical challenges are an advanced form of scenario. They have very specific objectives and will often need you to deploy specific fleets and ships. They are not always fair and will require admirals with stout hearts and a dose of luck. All right, gravity well. Okay, so we have border dispute, gravity well invasion, uh, king of the world on the back foot. All right, and then campaigns. And battle fleet roster ships. So name class, crew quality, points, XP, dice, skills, and refits. Um, okay. Okay, so all campaign related stuff. Weird situations. It's really only a few rules, questions, and answer. Like, uh, do, can an agile ship turn 90 degrees if it does not move at all? Okay. Warp power. A brief history of the general war. Several pages. The Federation, more than one planet. <laughs> Background, Federation Charter, military overview. Interesting. Klingons, similar. Klingon military, Klingon government, Klingon culture. Romulans, Gorns. Kazintis, Dolians. Pirates of Orion. There we go. So those are your, whatever you want to call those, um, factions. Fleet lists. And this is pretty nice. I mean, nice to look at. Uh, so these are the different ship rosters, as they're called. Um, so all these different ships, types, um, yep, or Klingons, what is a, what is a C7, C7 heavy battle cruiser, okay, now I know what a heavy battle cruiser is, Klingon heavy battle cruiser is, um, more and more. So each one is a nice picture of the, I guess, the miniatures that were, um, well, those are nice because they're, they look very universal. Anyways, looks like the miniature that was, um, produced, I guess, for this game at some point and your, your game information. Uh, okay. What else? Okay, there, so there's actually a hobby section to the rule book. Um, how to make how to make asteroids, painting your ships. Um, there we go, painting your ships. Um, lots of nice um, high quality pictures. How to make asteroids again, so there, there it is. Step by step, add more games from the Starfleet universe. And that, there we go. So we've looked over the rule book um, really quickly. 
let's actually try um, experimenting with some of the basic mechanics, especially movement and combat. So for that purposes, I've got my, my deep space here, got my rule book, got my ruler. Remember all the measurements in this game are in inches and um, got my Federation CA, um, which of course I took from Starfleet Battles. But uh, so I've got that marked in the rule book right there. I've got my um, Constitution class heavy cruiser marked and I've got my Klingon C7 um, also marked for easy reference the, the uh, heavy battle cruiser. So um, so take a closer look at these. Um, so again, the, the Federation Heavy Cruiser, um, it has a turn six and Klingon has a turn four. Okay, so the, the Klingon C7 is more maneuverable than the Federation Heavy Cruiser. Um, the Federation Heavy Cruiser has a damage of 32 and 11. So 32 overall and 11 is the point where the um, Federation Heavy Cruiser is considered crippled. And okay, so the C7, Klingon C7 is exactly the same, 32 slash 11. Um, the Federation Heavy Cruiser has four shuttles and the Klingon Heavy Battle Cruiser also has four shuttles. Okay, uh, well, shields, Federation Heavy Cruiser has shields of 24, Klingon Heavy Battle Cruiser has shields of 24. Um, Federation Heavy Cruiser has five Marines. The uh, Klingon he Heavy Battle Cruiser has 10 traits. Uh, so this, these are for the ship. The Federation Heavy Cruiser has labs eight, tractor beam two, and transporter three. The Klingon he Heavy Battle Cruiser has anti drone one, labs four, tractor beam four. Transporter 6. Alright, now for weapon systems, the, uh, the Federation Heavy Cruiser has a forward, I think it's forward half phaser, uh, port half phaser, starboard half phaser, and aft half phaser. And those are all phaser 1, uh, range of 18, uh, each of those have attack dice of two, and these all have accurate plus two, kill zone eight, and precise as special traits. Then it has on a turret, it has a phaser three, range of six, that has an accurate plus one, kill zone two, and precise. And then the Federation Heavy Cruiser has photon torpedoes. Um, arc is four, yeah, four. Um, attack dice of four, devastating plus one, multi-hit four, and reload, and then it has drone. Uh, okay. Now compare that to the Klingons. Klingons have also, well, a little different arrangement. They have accurate, these phasers are accurate plus two, kill zone eight, and precise, which is the same as the Federation ship. Just a different arrangement, so Four, port side and starboard side for one of them, port half, starboard half, and then the last one is aft, port, and starboard. Okay. Hmm. And then it also has a phaser three, range six, but the arc is aft, port, and starboard. Okay, so different different arrangement and different um, attack dice profile, um, but unlike the Federation Heavy Cruiser, Klingons have these disruptors. Twenty range twenty four. Uh, one is four in part, uh, four in port. Uh, one is four and starboard. Each of those have accurate plus one multi hit two. Okay, and then drones. 
All right, so those are our two ships. Very quick comparison. And um, got our pieces. So now, how do we get moving these and get some shooting in? So, under normal movement, these ships are going to move up to 12 inches per turn uh, in a straight line. I'm going to measure from center of the ship. Center of the ship there for a 12 inch move. So that's normal move. Ships may stay um, stationary if they wish. Real simple for, for movement. Okay, so Federation CA has a turn value of six. So it has to go straight line for a minimum of six, like that. Then it can turn up to 45 degrees and then it can move another six inches and, and it's turned like that. Uh, if you remember, the Klingon ship is more, more maneuverable. It has a turn value of four, so it can go straight line for four inches, turn up to 45 degrees, go another four inches, turn another 45 degrees, and then finish out its move 12 inches like that. So we'll conduct an attack from the um, Klingon C7 here against the Federation CA. So first we're gonna, we're gonna t determine the first weapon that is eligible to uh, hit that target. So you nominate a target for every weapon system before any attacks are made. Considering that these ships have more than just a couple weapon systems, we're talking, you know, the five different phasers for the Klingons, plus two disruptors. Well, even if we just limit it to five phasers and the Federation ship has um, <clears throat> five phasers and fo photon torpedoes. Um, yes, that's a good number. So, okay. So anyways, the battle cruiser would nominate. Well, actually, let's go ahead and do that because we have a phaser one that is four port and starboard. So that's obviously the four arc is the four arc is 90 degrees forward. Well, actually, I'm going to call that no. Okay. The Federation ship is outside the four. Oh, but there's still the starboard. Starboard is 90 degrees right. Okay, so actually that first phaser one weapon system itself has, I guess it fires through the four port and starboard arcs. Anywhere within that. So actually that... That does qualify because it's in the starboard 90 degrees. Okay. And then there's another phaser that's port half only. So that is not going to fire. We have a starboard, starboard half. Um, yes. Then we have another phaser that's aft port and starboard. So that would that would qualify too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we would we would do that. Let's just start with that first phaser. Okay. The first phaser listed for the the um, Klingon battle cruiser has four attack dice. Actually, let's go in order. Range is eighteen. So the range that he's shooting at is actually four inches. So it easily is within range. We have our attack dice. It has accurate plus two, kill zone eight, and precise. So let's figure out what those mean. All right, so for this first phaser firing, accurate plus two means I'm adding two to each die roll, which means in effect, two or higher are gonna be hits because four or higher is a hit on each die. So really two plus, so really only ones are misses. Kill zone eight means that out to eight inches, um, I'm going to double um, 
Oh, I gain multi-hit two. That's what I do. Multi-hit two uh, in this case. So I think what that means is each of these hits, each die roll that hits is going to count as two hits. And then we have precise, which means that we are going to add one to each roll on the attack table. All right, so let's do that. So this is the first phaser of the, um, wow. Okay, so actually I missed with two of them. All right, so I get two hits, then, uh, oh, and then this counts as four hits for the kill zone eight. Um, so then next step, so at this point I think I, Klingons achieved four hits against the Federation ship there, but I think those four are absorbed by the Federation ship's shields. Now, if one of these had been, oh, I wonder if it's a modified, <laughs> I wonder if it's a modified or raw. Every attack die that rolls a six, all right, that kind of makes it sound like a natural six. So if I rolled a natural six, this would have ignored the shields and struck the hull directly. Okay, but I didn't roll any sixes. So I think these four hits are absorbed by the Federation ship's shields. So I guess I would take the Federation heavy cruisers, shields of 24, subtract four, and it now has a shield, now has current shields of 20. Um, I think that would be it for that for that Klingon phaser attack. So now actually I see how with these attack dice being, I'm looking here, attack dice of one, two, four, um, three, four, two, three, four, two, two, four, one, three, two. So it looks like attack dice typically range between one and four, although I do see a 10 here, um, but they tend to range from one to four. So if on average, and I'm just guessing here, if on average, let's say two to four of your weapon systems can, uh, can engage that target, And actually, and actually, it's not really an uh, outrageous amount of attacking, although obviously it's going to be a race to, I think, actually, actually maybe it's not obvious. I think, I guess it would be a race to, uh, to see whose shields run out first, right? Um, okay, so that I think is, oh, well, I forgot the phaser one, because they're phaser one and three. Are there other types of phasers? See, phaser one, phaser th phaser two. Okay, so there are different types of phasers. Now we'll just go ahead and look at uh, the Federation heavy cruiser firing back at the Klingons there. Um, all right, uh, so... So now... Now we'll... The Federation will attack for, with all their phasers that they can bring to bear. So we have a four half, that's not going to help. We have a port half, so, so that applies. That's a phaser one. Starboard half does not. Aft half does. So we'll do those first. So we have two phaser ones. Those are two each. So this is this is the port half, and this is the aft half phaser ones. They have accurate plus two and kill zone eight. So similar to the Klingons. Okay, so they get three hits. So that doubled for kill zone eight is six hits. No sixes, so again, the six would be the uh, Klingons would absorb six from their shields. Okay. Um, then they have a phaser three with a range of six. Remember, it was four inches between the ships. So this phaser three um, 
It does a kill zone two, that doesn't apply. Precise does accurate plus one. Attack dice of two. Oh, there we go. So we have one miss and we have one six. So the six does get through the uh, Klingon's shields. So now the six, yeah, that hit went right through. I guess it counts as two. I guess it does count as two. So for every hit that goes through to the hull, uh, roll one die six. So I guess I would be doing two. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, no, no, because the kill zone was two, which is very short. Okay, no, that's just, just one. So this is an attack, uh, a roll on the attack table, but it is plus one for precise. Yeah. So I roll a six, plus one is seven. This is critical hit. As for solid hit, okay, so we would minus one damage to the Klingons right away, but also roll on systems table. So going to the systems table, there we go. One and two is impulse drive. A roll of one or two on the systems table is an impulse drive. So we're looking at the impulse drive table here, I guess. Um, am I rolling again? Um, hmm. Okay. So I don't think this is another die roll. I think that one hit got in, causing one damage. Plus it was a critical hit in the impulse drive area. So one critical, so I think subsequent critical hits are gonna add to, so this looks like another thing that you're gonna have to um, record off map for your ships. But this Klingon ship has now received one critical hit to the impulse drive area Extra damage is zero, so it's only the minus one of the original hit for damage, but it has an effect of power relays destroyed, penalty, maximum speed 10. So now, yeah, this would be another thing that you'd want to jot down. So now this Klingon C7 is going a max of 10 each turn. So that was the critical hit that got through. So that's, that's really a taste of movement combat all very basic, straightforward, uh, not very complicated in in you know processes or uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Um, look at the end phase real quickly. So in the damage control, so remember that the Klingons have one hit, one critical hit to their drive, uh, their their impulse drive. So during damage control with a die roll you could um, repair that damage, um, it looks like. Now we have compulsory movement and check for escalation. Any critical hit location that is subject to the escalate rule, so, what's, so what is subject to escalation? Some critical hits have es the escalate rule listed under some of their critical scores. So where's that? Mm. Where is it? Escalate. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Okay, talking about way down here on the penalty section. So we have Escalate. That's critical score 2 under Dilithium Chamber. For example, um, Escalate critical score three under weapons. Um, just as an example, critical score two under crew, etc. So they're listed way at the bottom under penalty. Um, escalate. So some critical hits have the escalate rule listed under some of the critical scores. This means things are bad on board and are likely to get worse if the crew does not do something about the damage quickly. If a ship has reached a critical score, it has escalate listed. Roll a dice at the end of the end phase. Okay, that's what we were talking about. On a four or more, the critical score of that location will increase by one. Okay, 
So it's kind of a an extra increase in compounding, you know, bad stuff from from a critical hit. Okay. Um, remember to keep rolling for escalation until and unless the critical score drops below the point at which escalate appears. Yeah, that's something important to keep in mind that I think, okay, so consult the location and its critical score and apply the extra damage and effects listed for that critical score and all others below it to the ship immediately. So as you, as you go up in critical score, your, um, you're applying everything at the new level and below. Um, okay. Yeah, so basic rules that are very easy to get into. Uh, I can basically always throw together a game using my um, black background here and the Starfleet, these one inch um, Starfleet battles counters um, and also when uh, when I feel like it I it looks like I, I can add those advanced rules um, piece by piece for just a little bit more uh, detail and a bit more flavorful game <laughs>